Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching electromagnetics at Idaho State University, and in this video series we are going to study plane wave propagation in a lossless media. We are ultimately going to derive these two equations. These two equations describe the electric field and the magnetic field. They describe a wave that is propagating in the plus z direction using a wave number k, meaning that we are in a lossless medium. And we can see that the electric field has just one directional component x, and the magnetic field has just one uh, directional component y. So this is the most simple case of the plane wave propagation in the positive z direction in a lossless media. In order to understand this video series, you must understand the way that we derive these two phasor wave equations. Now we can see that these are the phasor wave equations for the electric field and the magnetic field. If these are unfamiliar to you, please go back and review the previous video series in which we derived these. Going back to, to that, those video series, you will recall that we defined gamma squared, this uh, constant, such as this. Now, when we defined this constant, we said that epsilon sub c was a complex permittivity, which could have a real part and an imaginary part. The real part is the thing that you probably first learned about permittivity, that relative epsilon multiplied by the epsilon constant, whereas the imaginary part is related to the conductivity of the medium. So consider a case where we have a wave propagating in an environment where there is zero conductivity. So we're trying to solve these uh, wave equations, and we're going to consider a case where we have no conductivity, which means that this imaginary part is going to go to zero. Now, if that's the case, we'll redefine epsilon sub c as just epsilon, and therefore our gamma squared could be rewritten like this, where we've dropped that complex indicator. Okay, so starting from this, let's now define a k, where we have the k as being just using this real epsilon. So we're in an environment where we have zero conductivity. Now, that would mean that k squared would be the multiplication of this definition, which would be equal to omega squared mu epsilon. Now we will say that this uh, wave number is k, and k squared is equal to this. And we've now defined a wave number, and we can compare our gamma squared and this wave number, and we can see that they're very similar to each other. Therefore, we can also say that gamma squared is equal to minus k squared when we are in an environment where we have zero conductivity. Now because of this we can redefine our wave equation. We can rewrite it like this where we are now using k instead of gamma for our wave number propagation constant. Now a couple more things to note before we continue on is the, some uh, notation issues. So we have this where we have a bold capital E indicating that this is an instantaneous field. We are using the bold capital E with the tilde on top to indicate that we have converted to the phasor domain. And then we have this italicized non-bold E with a tilde on top and a X subscript. And when we see this, this means that we are looking at a phasor magnitude in a certain direction. Now, putting that all together in the phasor domain, we could write the phasor field as the sum of the directional components. So in the x direction, we have this x vector and this e sub x magnitude and so on for y and z. When I write this with my handwriting, it may be slightly hard to tell whether I'm using bold or um, the italicized version, so therefore, I will often use some of the equations in these, these videos. But as a general rule, if you see this e sub x and it's slanted like this, this is going to be a magnitude. Now, when I write it with my handwriting, I'm going to try to make it look like this so that you can see some differentiation between the uh, magnitude and the vector components. And so we can rewrite in my handwriting uh, using the vector and these scalar magnitudes. And when we've done it like this, we can see that we can rewrite our wave equation like this in my handwriting where we 
have converted our original wave equation into the wave equation written as the components. Now, when we do that, we, you should be able to see the, how I've indicated the vector and scalar components, and you'll be needing to understand this for the rest of the video series. So thank you and see you in the next video.